Hosea chapter number 13. When Ephraim, still on Ephraim, this, this is the, the tribe after the son of, jo of Joseph, spake trembling. He exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. Baal is the false god, the sun god. And now they send more and more and have made them molten images of their silver coins medallions and idols according to their own understanding they made up their own all of it the work of the craftsmen not God not the creator men they say unto them let the men that sacrifice kiss the cows. You know what goes on in, in certain churches in Europe? And all over the world, they walk up to a statue and they'll kiss it. There have been Bible-believing Christians who have been to these places and measured the, the, these statues and found a complete thumbs mark been worn away from these statues from all the people kissing them. You kiss the big fatted cow. Ready for hell. Isn't that how you greet the Pope? Not only are they worshipping these calves, they're kissing them. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud. Who? The ones that have the images, the idols, and kissing these calves. And as the early dew that passes away, it's gone. No remembrance. As the chaff that is driven from the whirlwind out of the floor, it's gone. This is what God thinks of idolatry. This is what God thinks of imagery. This is what God thinks about you bowing down and worshiping idols. You're nothing. You're just a blow in the wind. There's, how do you save a morning dew? You can't eat the chaff. As the smoke out of the chimney. There's no substance. What do you do with smoke? What, what valuableness can you make of smoke? Of smoke. Of smoke. The wood you can use to heat yourself and cook your meal, but what about smoke? You know, sometimes smoke is an irritant to other people. <clears throat> they have a thing called secondhand smoke that can do just as much damage as the person smoking. There's no value. And we're not talking about sins of smoking or that. We're talking about the sins of idolatry, imagery, and worship thereof. An aid of worship, God says, is no substance at all. And that came out of the mouth of God through his prophet, Hosea, inspiration. When was the last time this was read in a church that has the little dollies? Do you see why? Listen, I can speak because I grew up in this church my entire childhood and most of my teenage years. I grew up in this church. This was never read. The Bible is a closed, sealed book. To the people of that church. They don't want you to read the Bible. They want you to hear what the priest has to say. It is forbidden for you to read the Bible. Because you would you would open up this passage and say. Oh, wait a minute. What's this about imagery and idols? That I'm nothing. That might get you scared. That might bring you to fear of the Lord. That might bring you to fear of the Lord. In the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Oh wait a minute. My own understanding. That's not God's understanding. See, you really want to help someone who's involved in religion? Get them in the Bible. A King James 1611 Bible. Get them in it and, and proclaim to them to read it. Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing, by having fellowship dinner. Is that what it says? 
Faith cometh by hearing and, 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 and by watching Christian movies. It's not it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when you put your eyeballs in it and you read. And if you're somebody who's involved in this, this, this mess. And you're truly searching. What do you think the Holy Spirit will do with your heart? On verses 2 and 3. Truly. If you have not seared your conscience. You're coming along and you're, you're really searching. You pick up the Bible you come across this. You know what you're going to think? Wow. That's something particular here. And you're going to go run to your priest and all that. And you know what he'll do? Put it away. It's bad for you. I know. I have known Christians and I even myself have been told, put it away. Read something else. Read your daily bread. You can read your daily bread and all you want. You ain't going to get the 66 books of the Bible. You get selected passages. Check out the Roman Catholic Ten Commandments. Find out number two is missing. Why is number two missing? Because of Hosea chapter 13 verses 2 and 3. And yet they break ten into two. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's stuff. And what's that guy in his, his religion been doing all over the world in his past history? Coveting people's land? The poorest nations that are under in this world are under that big fat guy in, in Italy. While he lives high in a hog. Well, wait a minute. You're supposed to be under the Old Testament law, which you put, you can't have hog. What would the guy eat? Trying to put you back under the law with priests. So, not only giving the gospel to someone who followed in religion, you got to somehow, you got to pray to God that you can get the Bible in them, even if it's just a New Testament. Even if it's just the Gospel of John. And pray the Holy Spirit work. Because this is the Holy Spirit's book, isn't it? Is it not Jesus Christ? And the only way that somebody can go through this is say, now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding all of the work of the craftsmen. They say unto them, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves, therefore they shall be as the morning cloud, as the even dew that pass away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. The only person would, would not get anything out of that. It's an aid to worship. It's okay what I do. It's when they have an alibi and they want to sin more. And they don't want to follow the God of the Bible. And at that point, you know what? That person, I can't say beyond hope, but if a mother tells a child, the cookies in the cookie jar on the counter are not for you, leave them alone. And that kid goes in there, opens up the jar, grabs a cookie, and says, well, you know, I'm your child. It's for me. What's a spanking going to do? Now, they were told what we just read today in Deuteronomy as a family. Not even six into six chapters of Deuteronomy. We see, what did we read? No imagery. No idolatry. Don't make anything male. Don't make anything female. Don't make anything like bird. And you see what's going on in Hosea. They're doing exactly what God told them not to do. And God's mom is warning him. You take another cookie and I'm going to tell your dad on you and you're going to be in big trouble. When that kid gets to the point, I don't care what dad's going to do to me. I'm going to have the cookie and cookies. There's really no hope for that child. Because they don't care about the whipping. And why do Catholics are like that? They're mean and angry because the Holy Spirit has dealt with them at one time and they want to sin. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. That's the foundation. Remember we talked about the history last chapter 12. He's going back to the very foundation when he called them. Remember you guys were just slaves? Can't say that word, can you? Yeah, but these were brown people 
slaves of black people. You don't have a Jewish History Month in America, do you? According to the Bible, you should have a Jewish History Month every month. Because they are God's people. You ought to take every month and study something about the Jews in this Bible and get your relationship back to God. You're not going to do that with, with an African. They got images, idols, and witch doctors, and voodoo, and everything else. Like, oh, that's what the Roman Catholic Church has. You know, they take the body and the blood and eat and drink it. That's cannibalism. I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. Thou shalt know no God but me. Uh, what did it say in verse 1? Baal? For there is no Savior beside me. Now according to the New Testament, who is the Savior? What did verse 4 say? The Lord thy God, there is no Savior beside him. Show that to your Jehovah Witness. Jesus saves. Jehovah saves. Jesus. Well, the Lord thy God is the only Savior that is in black and white. Sometimes I wish they had a God-lettered Bible. You know, the words of Jesus are red. I like to have the words of God in blue or something. That would be a really good witness Bible to go to Jehovah with. Say, the Lord thy God. That's him speaking, right? Blue lettered. So if he's the only Savior... What's Jesus mean? Well, Jesus mean, it means in the Hebrew means Jehovah saved. So if Jesus is a Savior. No one man between God and man who died for our sins, who's washed away our sins. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin. So the world, so if he's our Savior and there's none else beside him, the Bible proclaims he's the Lord thy God. You remember what it said, what we read in Hebrews, I mean, we read in Deuteronomy today, is a chapter 3. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind. With thy soul. That's the same Lord thy God right here. You give all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And that verse says, there's no Savior besides all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And the Bible says the only Savior is whereby men must be saved. There's only one name, Acts 4.12. That's Jesus Christ. You can take the Jehovah Witnesses. You can crumple them up and throw them to the lake of fire. Using the Bible. We just read only four verses of one chapter that's hardly ever read in churches. And look how many religions we just hit already. If you were given a nickel every time Hosea was opened up in a Bible believing church or any church in the world from January 1st to December 31st, you probably wouldn't have enough to buy a cup of coffee. Maybe a cup of coffee and a donut. Maybe. Yeah, but look at the resources of Hosea. Hosea can be read to your typical American today because this is what's happening. Jeremiah should be read. Ezekiel should be read to Americans. You should start with every meeting that, that proclaims on Capitol Hill. You should start with Ezekiel 1, Jer Jeremiah 1, and Hosea, and just read one chapter before every each and every meeting. If you want to get a country right, you know, but the Bible's been closed. Imagine God saying, I'm the only Savior. You mean not Mary? You mean my water? My pastor? The family I'm born of? My position? I did know thee in the wilderness. And in the land of great drought. That can also be applied to Revelation 13. In the tribulation period. Great drought. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness coming out of Egypt, was there great drought? No, the rock followed them, didn't it? There was even one time when, when, when they were to get water from the rock that got Moses in great trouble, didn't it? You know what's going to happen in the tribulation period? You're going to have a time where the water is going to be 
scarce, if not blood. Give a new name to Bloody Mary. According to their pastor, so were they filled. Abundance. They were filled. Not just filled. They were filled. Double filled. That's America. Realize really how much America throws out? A bum can live off a dumpster from a restaurant for an entire life. And there probably are some that do. And they even lock them up. And their heart was exalted. What happened to God? Therefore, have they forgot? Oh, there's God. They forgot him. China's giving us everything we got. My own hands came. Look what I did, Lord. Look at all the crops I brought for us. Right? Isn't it great? Abel brings a lamb. He said, Lord, all I can do is feed them and, and bring them to water. And that's all I can do with this little creature here. If that land that, that Abel had, if it had a if it had a, a mark in it, he couldn't do anything about that mark. Jesus said, "Can you make a hair white or black? Can you add a a, a, a cubit to your staff? You can't even do that. But in a field, I can go pick what I want and leave what I want behind and pull what I don't want. They've forgotten me. Huh? Fear. That's where America's going to go." If the Lord tarries, I would say the generation that these children today, children, if, if I may not be wrong. Because the children today are not brought up with Bible truth in the church. I'm not talking about the outside unsaved world. I'm talking about in churches. They're not being brought strong enough in the Bible to carry with their children. You don't like that? That's tough. Therefore, therefore, because they've forgotten me and they got all kinds of increase, I will be unto them as a lion. As a leopard, by the way, will I observe them. The Antichrist. Satan is our, is our adversary like a lion seeking who may devour the leopard, that, that animal that spotted represents the three nations of people that came out of that ark. So when you forgot me and you're filled, I'll just send the Antichrist your way. He'll sink your battleship. I will meet with them as a bear. Lion, leopard, bear. That's the Antichrist. Lion and bear show up in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. I'm not sure about that leopard. I know he shows up in some weird place. Can a leopard change his... I uh, no. yeah, Can a leopard change his spots? He feels can change his... Something like that. But there's the Antichrist right there. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her wealth. Now, understanding that passage there, I don't need to get into great... National Geographic or anything like that. It tells me if a bear loses her whelps, her little bear wings, she's going to be angry. And I've been told over and over, you know, if there are bear cubs, you stay away from them. I don't care how cute they are because mama's looking for them some way or another. Because if they were not lost, mama bear would be there. And bear cubs are all by themselves. They run away from mama, and mama's upset. I got that. So you don't want to meet God, forgetting God, as an angry God, being God's people. You get the idea what the tribulation period is going to be for them? I'm getting to wonder sometimes as we as study more and more, how are people going to survive those seven years? 
America is going to be a disaster. And just, they won't be able to use their cell phone. They're going down the street like this. It melted. <laughs> oh, I can't call, I can't text. The Antichrist is described as a lion, as a leopard, as a bear. How would you like to meet them? Oh, yeah, your gun is going to take care of that, sure. I will rend the call of their heart. That's kind of fat or the part of the body inside. See, they got a heart condition. They've lifted their heart, verse 6. They have not turned to their God. It says that to love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart. They forgot him. So Israel as a nation needs, if I may say it like this, they need a heart transplant. They got to get right with God. There will I devour them like a lion. Go study how lions eat. I've got a book, The Lion Sleeps, something like that. It's... It's a remarkable book on how a lion hunts. And you don't even know he's there sometimes. Until it's too late. The wild beast. Beast. That's an interesting word. Why not wild animal? We're looking at tribulation. Shall tear them. David got victory over the bear and lion, didn't he? He walked up to Saul and said, hey. There was a lion, a bear, and I grabbed them by his beard and I kicked their butt. You ain't going to do it now. You imagine David sitting down with his relatives in the millennium saying, No, that lion, if you just turned to God and believed in God like I did and tried to set my house, you would have victory. But you guys want to be idiots. Oh, Israel. See, Israel, not Americans. Thou hast destroyed thyself. Oh, God didn't do it. They did it themselves. But in me, God, is thine help. Now look at Does that sound like God's all finished with Israel? God just says, I'm going to send a bear. I'm going to send a leopard. I'm going to see, send a lion after you. But I can help you. I will be thy king. Who's the king of kings? There he is again. We're talking about who? First four. The Lord thy God. I will be thy king. So, if he's the king and Israel is the bride, what would she be? All right. Do you remember about a little Jewish queen we read about? That took over a Gentile queen? Mm -hmm. There's an interesting book for you to read the match with there. Weren't the Jews being persecuted? And all of a sudden, one day, Haman got in trouble and hung on his own gallows. There you go. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy city? Who else is going to save you? When you got the entire world going after you, now, don't say those nations that Jesus said are the, are the sheep nations, because they had no idea they were helping them. Jesus said to them, you know, he says, and they said, when did we take care of you in prison? When did we fix your, your medical needs? When did we feed? They had no idea what they were doing. You think Israel's got enemies now, you wait to the tribulation period. And thy judges, of whom thou saidest, give me a king and prince. Now we're going to go back to history again. I gave thee a king in my anger, and took him away in my wrath. So, I mean, Samuel, man, he pleaded to God. You know what he told Samuel? They haven't rejected you. They rejected me. The iniquity of Ephraim... Is bound up. His sin is hid. It's like put inside of a blanket or a tent or a knapsack. Or you can't see it. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. 
and the sorrows of a travailing woman, there's that travailing woman, the pangs of a birth, which is always associated with the tribulation, shall come upon him. I believe he's not mentioned 144,000. He is an unwise son. He didn't say bastard, did he? You do know what the meaning of bastard is. God just said, hey, he's not wise. Still my son, he's just an idiot. He doesn't know what to do. For he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I have no idea. I just don't know where, why it would be a population. Maybe he's not going to grow much in population when all Israel will. I don't know. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. So victory by God. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my... And does it say, O grave, where's the victory? O, where's the sting of death? That's in Jesus Christ. This is the resurrection of the nation of Israel as a corporate. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, the Jews, an east wind shall come. Uh-oh, there's the east wind. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry. Like I said, that east wind never brings anything good. Dry, drought. And his fountain shall be dried up no water he shall spoil the treasures all shall spoil the treasures of all pleasant vessels they're going to grab all your plastic bottles of water and take them for yourself samaria that's the capital of israel shall become desolate it is today for she has rebelled against her god 2 Kings 18, 12. They shall fall by the sword, army. That's what Jeremiah kept telling Judah. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. You're going to have an army that's going to come and they don't care how they're going to treat. There's going to be no Geneva Convention. And their woman with child, pregnant, shall be ripped up talk about abortion there is right there the army's going to come in he's going they're going to take the children they're going to bash them against the wall they're going to take the pregnant women just cut them open there's your baby you see that's grew and crew that's history that's mankind that's the one that god said for so i so for look I, I can't quote try and quote the most according to him for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Those are the same kind of people today that do these kind of things that God said, you know what, I love them too. I love that Muslim. I died for that Muslim. That guy that's in the White House, I died for that guy in the White House. I love him. I love them at Calvary. Who's going to go in all the world and preach the gospel to him? Oh, it may cost your life. What did it cost me? This is the fact of human nature. Who made missiles? Who made bombs? Who made grenades? Who made a gun? Who made an arrow? Who made a way of executing people? Who made a way of torturing people? Who made a way to make people of pain? And, and Who made people? Hey, we can heal your pain, but you can't afford it. Who made people to bow down before people to, to get their advantage? People. And when God spoke, just before he spoke to Noah, he says, the wicked, the imagination of, of the man is just continual. So when the Bible says, all have sinned, come, listen, we're all capable. Because we're all sinners. We have a wicked heart. Thank God, by the grace of God, some are saved. 